one of which was a middle school teacher. And one day I did a lesson on poetry as a form of protest and how you can use poetry to make people care about what you care about. And one of my students said, well, Ms. White, do you write poetry? And I said, no, I'm not kind of writing some fiction. And he was like, well, I hear it's a good way to get people to care about what you care about. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there, Chris. Um, so I went home and thought about what I cared about, and this is what I wrote. It's called Manny's Instructions. Four o'clock Cedar Lane Middle School cafeteria. On the periphery of the spring dance where wheel jackknife tables are pinched askance, Manny Olivaro, two years out of El Salvador, has taken it upon himself to teach La Profesora, the aptly named Ms. White, to merengue, or salsa, or cumbia, or at least just sway, just stray from the way I stand planted, like locked, just stray from my instinctive circa 2000 emo kid rock. And but it's, it's a sight, it's a sight. He says, it's easy, Miss White. Just take my hand, step in the right direction, try and make it look fun, and you move me, and I move you, and we're okay. <laughs> and see, that's what I love about teaching 12 to 14 year olds, this perfect mix. Uh, I haven't done this one in a while. See, that's what I love about teaching 12 to 14 year olds. Uh, like, you got this. You got snap, this is when you snap. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I love about teaching 12 to 14 year olds, this perfect mix of eclectic souls, of old and young souls, who still think it's kind of cool to dance with a teacher at school. Hell, who still think it's kind of cool to go to school. This is the perfect age on a precipice, this age where realists can still be idealists. And Maria writes in her journal that she's kind of scared of her first kiss. And Nelson admits that he feels lost in a crowd, and Wilson asks out loud if he's been good because he wants me to be proud. And Chris confesses that he hates the smell of dope at this exact age, when each one still has hope. Each one, but for some, I can't help but wonder. Hope for how long before they fall under, before they believe the hype about what's wrong with the lives they lead and fall into the throngs of SPEDs and LEPs and 504s and EDs, who eventually quit swimming against the sea and lose sight of the coast and just float along, resigned to singing back up in somebody else's life song. Like Juan, who sits in the back in black and won't let anybody near him, and Peter, who comes to detention just to talk and have somebody hear him. And Renato, who says that bad kids like him are too old to change, and dropouts are bullseye already by his age. And the clouds of frustration that shroud Christian's face, and the way Amber wonders if she's going to make it to George Mason. But no matter the test score or labels, when they put pen to paper, they're willing and able. And Oda, they have something to say, like Melissa, who writes of rainstorms that fall from her eyes every other day and the blood that Ernesto describes on his hands after a fight, and the drunken reggaeton of Andy's apartment complex by night. And Andy's Mexico, the smell of death and mamelas, and Kelvin's memories of Estan Suelas, last train to cries being whipped in the face, the smell of cow piss and alcohol and never feeling safe. And it's for this exact reason that, as much as my heart soars, it also breaks, because no matter the fear they hide behind rolled eyes and scowling face, if they saw themselves the way I saw them, they'd never lose faith. After five years of teaching, I thought this urgency would wane, and I find a way to detach in order to stay sane, but instead the list just grows more and more names. Fairhill, Canton, Columbia, Cedar Lane, Carla, Jose, Jake, Sage, Taiwan, Shaquane, all of them different, but each one the same. And I think, how can I teach them, let alone reach them, beseech them to achieve and believe without preaching? But as that worry sets in, and it worms its way under my skin, I remember Mandy's instructions. He said it's easy, Miss White. Just take my hand, step in the right direction, try and make it look fun, and you'll move me, and I'll move you, and we'll be okay. Woo!